Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Five, four. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, Atlanta. It is an honor to be with you this morning. Thank you for joining us every morning at nine in the morning to start the daily huddle where we say the way you start your day gives you the rest of your day and the way that you live each day gives you the rest of your life. Good morning, everybody who's here at the live studio of the Daily Huddle. Good morning, Molly. Good morning, Thomas. Good morning, Dave. Amazing, Andrea. Good morning. How are you feeling, Andrea? Tyrone, Lorna, Karina. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. Mark, the one and only Mark. Sorel, what time is it? It's now. It is now. No better time than now. And what day is today? Today is today. Today, only today. And where are you? I am right where I need to be, my friend. That's exactly where, where life is. I am right here where I need to be, and today is today, and the time is now. I mean, it's really the only thing we got. At the end of the day, everything else is a mental illusion. It's all we got is right now. So it always is an honor for me to introduce America's executive coach, Mr. Sorel Catan, someone who has made a difference to thousands of people's lives and has made a difference to my life. There's a story before I met Sorel and a story after I met Sorel, and I am not lying to you at all. Thank you, Sorel, for being here. Good morning, Sorel. Good morning, Giovanni. There certainly is a story before I met you and a story after I met you. Now, people are looking at those stories unfolding, right? So you are a tremendous difference. And a tremendous difference in the lives of the people you work with and your clients. So, Giovanni, thank you for being that contribution. Thank you for creating this conversation with me this morning. And the conversation, the question is uh, one we find really intriguing to both of us. And I hope you'll find it that way too. How do you get out of your comfort zone for good? For good. And it dawned on me, Giovanni, that uh, there is a certain way in which I define comfort zone. And it's the way that uh, everyone defines a comfort zone. The dictionary says this, a comfort zone, your comfort zone is a place or situation where you feel safe and at ease without stress. And the moment I hear that, I go, well, gosh, all I have to do is go someplace where I don't feel safe and where I'm stressed out. Then I'll be out of my comfort zone. That's not it, though. <laughs> so in, in, in looking at this conversation with Giovanni, it's like, oh, my God. I could actually be stressed. I could actually be totally out of a place where I'm comfortable and still be in my comfort zone. And in that space, I'm just working really hard to be really stressed and be out of a place where I'm comfortable so I can say I'm out of my comfort zone. And Giovanni, there's this discovery we made yesterday about what it is to be in a comfort zone. Uh, take the next leg of the conversation, my friend. Yes, Sorel, thank you. And good morning, everybody, again. Uh, you know, one of the things that we are very committed to in the daily huddle, right, in an, and in our own lives, the whole, basically, underneath of everything that we do is about really supporting each one of you who are listening and those of you who listen on Facebook and those of you who listen to the recording later is to propel people to have breakthroughs in their lives, right? But that's like a big thing to say, propel people to have breakthroughs in their lives, right? How do I propel myself to have a breakthrough in my own life, right? 
And one of the things that we all can sort of agree on and we can all feel related to is this concept of comfort zone. You know, like a lot of us at, at some point in our, and raise your hand if this relates to you, at some point in our pursuit of having our businesses to grow, having our relationships to work, having our lives go to the next level, we hear this concept of get yourself out of the comfort zone. Giovanni. Get yourself out of the comfort zone. And we go through this by, and we listen, we hear this because in some way or another, we want to be in some space where we're taking different actions, where we are consistent, where we're not consistent, where we're vulnerable, where we're not vulnerable, where we create something, where we didn't create it before. So in another way of saying it is where we get ourselves outside of the routine that we are. You have your own routine. I have a, myself, I have my own routine and everybody has their own routine. Yet the, I'm, the brain really likes routine. You know, you have a routine because the brain really likes it. The brain, your brain, the way it's set up, right, is to in some way or another keep you alive. And guess what? A routine will keep you alive. But it would not create a breakthrough. A routine not necessarily will create a breakthrough. And just checking in with yourself if this is resonating with you, right? It's not looking for the truth. It's just to see if this is resonating with you. So yeah. we wanted to talk about a conversation that could probably address at the core. Well, how do I get out of my comfort zone? How do I really do it? Because talking about it is just talking about it is not going to do it you know nike says well just do it well just do it doesn't really do it right i mean just looking at getting myself out of the comfort zone is not going to get me out of the comfort zone there is a conversation to have there is a kind of an insight the kind of a journey to have in order to in order for one to address this whole world of comfort zone in a manner in which you can actually get out of the comfort zone and it's a conversation that in some way or another, we're going to go a little deep on this morning morning. And I want you to get closer to the conversation to see if you can find yourself in the conversation and then begin to discover the true steps to get out of your comfort zone. So, Sorrel, do you want to get us started in that journey? Uh, you have gotten us started. And Giovanni, I want you to know that when you move back away from your microphone, it crackles. So uh, next time, stay up front. Works? Perfect. That works. So what Giovanni's pointing to and what we're discovering together, so th this conversation is, uh, is, is for us to inquire, not like Giovanni and I are coming with the answer to you. We really want you to sink your teeth into this one. Imagine this. You were born and people were talking around you. People like your mother, your father, your uncle, your brothers, and they were saying things. They were saying things about you. They were saying things about each other. They were saying things about other people who weren't there. They were saying things about life. And they were saying things about the world and how the world operates and how you should be in it. And at some point in time, you took all of that and you said, that must be the way I am. That must be me. And guess what? That became like a tape, a tape recording in your head. And Giovanni and I were laughing yesterday. So what we're calling comfort zone, literally redefining comfort zone, is you wake up, that tape is playing. When that tape is playing, whatever it's saying sounds familiar, feels familiar. Whatever you do as a response to what that tape is saying sounds familiar, looks familiar, feels good whether it hurts or not. Remember, this is not about bodily comfort. And that tape happens to only have three settings. The first setting is play. That setting, by the way, is automatic. It's always playing. And then we play a trick on ourselves. Every now and then, well, for some people, 
more than others. We'll press rewind. And that's when we're so consumed, so worried about what happened and how we're looking now based on what happened. When that gets a little bit uncomfortable, we press fast forward. And when we press fast forward, it gets really dangerous. We actually think we're thinking something new or saying something new or doing something new when really it's just the same old tape. You're either playing a portion of it that you think is now, or you're playing a portion of it that you think is in the past, or you're playing a portion of it that you think is going to give you a better future. It's really the same old tape. So when we're talking about getting out of your comfort zone for good, we're talking about discovering for the first time, not like you understand it conceptually because I'm saying it now. It makes sense, doesn't it? Raise your hand if it makes sense. I'm not talking about it making sense. I'm talking about you looking at your life and going, oh my God, I've never said a new word. Oh my God, I've never thought a new thought. Holy moly, I've never taken a new action. And I've always wanted new results in my life. So to get out of your comfort zone for good is discovering that tape and discovering that there is no stop button on it. And now the question begs itself, right? So if there is no stop button, what do I do? Giovanni, what do you think? Very good. Yeah, very good. So one of the things that was present as, as you were sharing, Sorel, can you hear me okay, Sorel? Yeah, much better now. One of the things that I was present as you were sharing is, well, what is the tape pointing to? What is that tape talking about? It's quite abstract, you see. What, what, so what is that tape talking about? Yeah. And so what, what Sorel and I are pointing to is that you can consider yourself that inside of the routines that you have, there is a tape in some degree pointing to why you should have that routine. And that is pointing to your beliefs, what you believe and what you don't believe. Your rules, the way that you're set up to be in during the day, like why you say yes to some things and why you don't say yes to some things, why you allow people to say some things or to be part of your life and why you don't allow to be people to be part of your life, like your rules, you have rules. You have beliefs and you have rules and all of those beliefs and all of these rules and everything else in some way I'm pointing to, that tape begins to form what you and I call an identity, an identity for yourself what you like, what you don't like, what you resonate with and what you don't resonate with, right? And that identity in itself is what that tape is creating. And that tape, what that tape is creating, pointing to that identity is your comfort zone. Now, it's really difficult for one to just wake up in the morning and change their identity, right? I mean, that's, that's a real big mountain to climb, yet, it is the identity that keeps the comfort zone there. It is the identity that prevents you from making another phone call. It is the identity that keeps you from taking your business to another level. It is the identity that keeps the routine where it is. So if I want to shatter the box of the comfort zone, if you will, I got to start looking at in some degree, chopping away that which I hold on to so dearly, which is my identity. And that is what that tape is creating. And so in some way or another, whenever you hear get out of your comfort zone, in some way or another, what Sorel and I point, are pointing to is that you begin to allow yourself to disassociate yourself with who you have become. And I know that's kind of a, a big thing to say, yet in the absence of looking at it that way, then I'm going to continue doing the same things. 
I'm going to continue having the same actions. I'm going to continue having the same friends. I'm going to continue having the growth, whatever growth I have. And so whatever else I want to do, whatever else I want to create in my career, whatever else difference I want to make, I won't have a chance because I'm going to try to do it from the same set of rules that I wake up in the morning with. And that's going to be a little bit tough. Does that, is that begin to make sense? Is that pointing to something? Raise your hand if that's making sense. Absolutely. Now, here, 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 Giovanni, I just got this as you were speaking, right? To get out of my comfort zone is to actually get that the me that I am for me is comfortable. And if who's actually getting out of the comfort zone is the me that I have been for me, I'm just stepping in another room in the comfort house. <laughs> I'm not getting out of my comfort zone. So actually getting out of the comfort zone literally demands the invention and the creation of a new me. And that's what this conversation is about. That's what I'm getting in what you just said. Yeah. To actually yeah. Invent, create a new me is the beginning of getting out of the comfort zone for good. Yeah, and that poses a question. Well, how do I create a new me, right? Isn't that the question there? How do I create a new me? Exactly. So we're going to point to a few uh, ways of looking at that, and it really is a journey. The key word here is a journey. It's not three steps. It's not a motivational video. It's not a YouTube video. It is a journey itself. I was yesterday. I was working on my yard, right, Sorel, and I looked at the ground for my yard. The grass wasn't growing in a particular area, and it hasn't been growing for years, really, maybe a year or two. It hasn't been growing. And putting more water in it is not going to do it. Like in, in some way or another, it's important for us to get that listening to motivational videos, for example, it's not going to do it if the ground is not worked. Or reading another book, it's not going to do it if the ground is not worked. It's like putting water on top of mud and then hoping for the grass to grow. So it's so so allowing oneself to begin to create a new you, a new me. There is a journey in place, and the journey is to begin to allow oneself to think, well, maybe, maybe I'm not done. Maybe I'm not, you know, like whenever you cook a steak, I'm not well done. Maybe I'm just starting. Maybe I can see myself the way I the way in which I saw myself many, 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 many years ago as a, as a white canvas. Maybe I can adopt a whole different view. Maybe I can become an artist with my own identity. Maybe I can create it. And when that journey starts, then I start visiting the very thing I believe. But that's very difficult to visit. The very things I believe are really tied up with my emotions and my morals. So people will not go there, Sorel. So a way, a way to go there is to start going back the memory lane, the movie memory lane, and then just kind of getting to really realize in some way or another that the things I believe, the way I constructed was not created by me. I didn't create the beliefs I created. I, do, I didn't create the conclusions I had. It was done by someone else with a different set of struggles. And by visiting all these beliefs I have that were created by somebody else, the things that I believe were created by somebody else, then I start discovering the things that I fear. What maybe those things that I fear, you know, like a lot of people fear what other people think about them. You know, Sorel, a lot of people don't make a phone call because they really fear what the person on the other line thinks about them. I promise you they're not thinking about you, yet I don't make a phone call, right? Maybe that belief, maybe that fear, it's not mine. Maybe I got it from someone else. So by visiting all these conversations, there's a chance, there's a real chance to begin to create a new self. And that's a journey itself that... We can say it's, for some of you, it started at the daily huddle. 
And for some of you, it will continue like it is for me. I'm not done. I'm just creating myself, right? So I want to I want to I want to set that this the, this the stage there, Sorella. Maybe get some questions from those of you who are in the audience, or maybe something else you'd like to add, Sorella. Uh, no, let's uh, let's let's get it up, up on the mat. I want to hear what you're hearing in this conversation. And Giovanni, you're still crackling. Thank you, Sheila. Go ahead. You're on mute, Sheila. All right, great. Good morning. This is so good because what I'm hearing is uh, something I was actually grappling with Saturday. I was writing a course. And the whole time I was like, well, what do you think? Well, why do you think you can do this course? And why do you think you can? And my, it just, the brain was just crazy. It was just rampant. But I kept going until about 3 a.m. because things were flowing. So what I'm hearing is it really does require something you for yourself to go beyond where you're comfortable. Um, and I'm hearing, uh, well, it seems like you need to make, create new, I don't know, new practices, new ways to think, new ways to take things on. Cause I'm right here with you guys, okay? We're, we're we're all building something, you know. Everybody in this call, I think, is building something new as entrepreneurs. And you bump up against that that familiar that this morning. Oh, I don't feel like going to the daily huddle. Oh, it won't be so bad if you miss the day. Ah, oh, but, but but all the way down <laughs> to the <laughs> daily huddle. That pull to not do it. So I'm just really grappling with it. I'm really engaged newly because honest to God, I'm really working on some cutting edge stuff and all the time talking to myself, oh my God, who's going to do this with me? I'm going to have to call the rail. I mean, seriously, because I know I'm bumping up against going, you know, unfamiliarity uh, ground that I haven't experienced or something. So I don't know, it just yeah, requires this, something. This is, this is really cool, really cool, right? And the, the thing that I'm grappling with, Sheila, is this, uh -huh. that every time I see the opportunity for a new set of actions, yep. a new approach to doing things, another set of tools and techniques that will make me more effective, maybe, Maybe what there is to do is to actually look at the me who's looking at the new techniques, the Very me good. looking at the new set of services, the me that's looking at the new way to be more effective. So what, what Giovanni and I are proposing, right? And we're just proposing it is that maybe being in your comfort zone looks just the way it looks right now. And what's uncomfortable is looking at you and in the moment, inventing and creating a new you. And all of a sudden the place opens up where you don't even know what the actions are going to be. You don't even know what the new tools and techniques are. Yeah. Very good. I don't quite, I don't quite feel comfortable there. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> and I'm inviting you guys to swim in that for a little bit. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Andrea. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Sorel and Dio. Thank you so much for this opportunity. So, what I'm hearing from what you're saying or the way that I'm interpreting this for my life is I, I try to make myself uncomfortable all the time. I think it comes with my culture. It comes to coming to a new country, learning a new language. So I'm, dri I'm driven by that. But what I'm hearing from your um, discussion is that it is okay for us to talk to each other in third person, like getting yourself out of where you are see yourself about what you're doing and that will make you feel uncomfortable about the things that you're potentially seeing yourself do like evaluate yourself from outside 
and seeing yourself and being uncomfortable in that comfort zone by evaluating what you're doing and not just and just go with the flow is this is something I don't know that I was doing and now well let's see where this takes us so it's like allowing ourselves to see ourselves as a third person and talk to ourselves as a third person and evaluating and talking to yourself that way that's that's how I'm interpreting and how I'm seeing your discussion and and that's that's a perfect way to be in the conversation thank you for being there Andrea and I heard something when you said I'm someone who loves to put myself in places where I'm uncomfortable. The next time you feel uncomfortable, consider that's your comfort zone. That's the comfort zone. Yeah, exactly. So that's what I was trying to say. If I'm comfortable being uncomfortable, then I need to stop being comfortable when I'm right. uncomfortable. It's like evaluating. That too would be more of it. Uh-huh. Because the, the instant you engage in you, like the you you become for yourself, mm -hmm. so, well, I'm uncomfortable. I must now be uncomfortable so I can have a new set of actions and get more. <laughs> yeah. You're trapped yep. in the tape. You're pressing fast forward, rewind, play, fast forward, rewind, play, and you're, you're still in your comfort zone. Yep. The, the, you know, analogies don't go too far, but I'll, I'll take this one. Take the tape, smash it. And smashing the tape is the equivalent of what Giovanni pointed to. Not so much looking at yourself as a third person, but looking at what the tape is saying and what belief is ingrained there that you may need to question. Did that make sense, Andrea? It does, thank you. Cool, cool. Gio, anything? Not yet, let me uh, hear from Ronald. Go ahead, Ronald. Hey guys, yeah, I, I had to put myself off mute. And it's interesting, I watched uh, Hamilton this weekend and uh, the, uh, uh, the discussion after Al Milton was really interesting. And and Disney Plus, so if you guys get a chance to look at it. And and it hit well, Sorel, when you just mentioned when you feel uncomfortable, that's basically that's where you need to dig deeper. And that was a comment that um one of the actors was talking about is the the digging deeper is where the nuggets is, is where the 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 lesson is so so i found myself this weekend um actually you all guys from saw lamb or graduate probably here so i found myself digging into uh uh, uh getting more information about architecture but marketing architecture marketing really and, and it's just it just like like uh, um really uh, 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 find myself a way where I I discovered something in that conversation from Hamilton, and and it prone me to keep going in there and really find more, and I keep finding more. I keep finding what I wasn't doing right, and keep finding more. So so I think I think you know the being uncomfortable is a normal way actually and i don't know if it if it rhymes with a personality if we, with your personality but it is just a normal way of being that's what i had to say thank you ronald thank you very much and uh, i'm looking forward to see that movie now um thomas go ahead yeah um what I got from it was it's like I'm on the outside the box looking in and I'm seeing authentically what's there, what I hadn't seen before. And it's given me an opportunity to reevaluate re what it is I'm choosing and doing. And in the process, I'm actually just taking a look, see what's there and see what's coming out of it. If I continue in said 
steps of motion and the end result. And it also creates a world of new available possibilities and creating a new future, if I would choose it. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah, as we're visiting the conversation, as Ronald was pointing to and Andrea was pointing to and Sorel and all of us were pointing to is, um, I want to allow myself to catch myself thinking that, oh, when I'm uncomfortable, it must be that I'm out of my comfort zone. When I feel anxious, it must be that I'm out of my comfort zone. When I feel nervous, it must be that I'm out of my comfort zone. That's not necessarily pointing to being out of the comfort zones, given that it could be your comfort zone to be nervous. It could be your comfort zone to be anxious. Like some people like to be loud when they're speaking and they, they for themselves, they see when I am being loud means that I'm out of my comfort zone, right? No, it means that you're just being loud in your comfort zone, right? And that can be the same as being nervous or anxious, right? I think one of the things that like Sorel says, examples don't really point Examples only go so far, but one, one example I, I always like to give in the spirit of allowing ourselves to step out of the comfort zone is that it's not necessarily, it can be accessed by feeling nervous, by feeling anxious. You know, you're in a place you've never been before. You're talking to someone you never talked before. You're making a phone call you never made before. Yeah, it can be looked that way, but it also can be looked at, at letting go a belief that is so inherited within you that letting it go is not anxious or nervous. It's just letting it go, letting go some truth that you have about something. Like for me, for many years, for many years, I had this belief, I had this story, right? That I needed to become someone else to be someone who's smart. That someone else is smart, not me that I wasn't born with that set of tools, that I wasn't born with that set of DNA. And it's just, you couldn't, you couldn't give me another story. You couldn't give me another, another tape to put in me. I had overwhelming evidence based on my stories. And then I saw this quote from Albert Einstein, right? That says, I'm not a genius. I'm just really curious. And I thought to myself, I can be curious. I don't have to be smart to be curious. And I let go all the thinking and all the story and all the tape around what it is to be smart. It didn't cause any anxiety for me. It didn't cause any nervousness for me. It didn't cause anything. I just stayed in this realm called being curious. And the realm of being curious allowed me to travel where I've traveled and be in the places that I have been play I, now I get to play with. And now that's my comfort zone. So maybe what else am I, am I not being curious about? And anyway, it's just pointing to something, right? So thank you all for being in this conversation today. Uh, Sorel, what are your last words? Uh, <clears throat> my last words are simply, uh, first of all, thank you. And second, we love to practice. And the way Giovanni and I define practice is doing something without expecting a specific result but doing that something just for the sake of doing it so the daily huddle is practice for us we're doing the daily huddle we're having these conversations so first i invite you to practice in life practice 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 do it say it for the sake of doing it saying it you'll get some result but don't be attached to that and we love practicing. So on August 28th, 29th, and 30th, Giovanni and I have created a three-day practice session. And we'd love to have you there. Uh, that three-day practice session is called Access the Leader Within. It's a virtual leadership retreat, and you can access it and learn more about it at accesstheleaderwithin.com. Uh, Giovanni, what time is it? It's now. And what day is it? Today. And where are you? Right here. Exactly where you need to be. And so are you. I love you. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. We've got a great week in store for you. Uh, four phenomenal 
expert guests will be joining us starting tomorrow. And uh, invite your friends, invite your family members. See you on the Daily Huddle tomorrow. Have a good day, everybody. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you Bye. for being here. Have a good one, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye, Karina. Emails coming to you about the affiliate thing. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs>